Hi everyone, it's Don and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, we have another ship canceling a cruise altogether for many, many months away. We also have a cruise port that's opening in Alaska and is thrilled to have as many cruise ships as possible, even while Juno is saying that they want to limit cruise ships there. It all depends on where you're going, folks. We also have that gentleman back in the news who was stranded in the Philippines and was afraid to fly and the cruise ship left without him and he blames the cruise line. A little bit more on that and we also have uh, an update on just how much the cruise industry is planning to grow between 2023 and 2028. And it, it just might astound you, the numbers. First, a little bit of good news, Skagway, Alaska, the one that had its dock closed right beside the White Pass Railway because of rock slides. They had to shut it down last year. Ships started avoiding the cruise port altogether. They couldn't bring it and they basically became a bit of a ghost town when it comes to cruising. And that's not good when 90% of your income comes in those cruising season months. Well, they just received their first cruise ship of this year and a lot has been done. They spent over $9 million to make some changes to the cruise port. They safened off the area. They also have taken possession of the cruise dock themselves that had been in the Yukon and White Pass under their supervision for over five decades now. And now the port of Skagway is owned by the city of Skagway itself, which will also help. And they're just thrilled. They're saying during winter, this place is like uh, abandoned. There's hardly anybody left in the town. Of course, they get huge snowfalls, winter life, no cruising, no, tra no transportation in and out, hardly at all it just disappears. But during the summer, they're normally peak busy and they've been suffering through the pandemic and then they got hit with the rock slides. So while one cruise port like Juno is saying, we want to limit how many cruise ships come in, Skagway is saying, just bring them on. We need the income. And uh, yeah, when your entire destination relies on tourism, pretty much, you need the tourism to come in. We also have that gentleman back in the news um, who was left from P&O in the Philippines. Now, a little bit more has come out about the story where apparently he was on the ship and he started having uh, a little bit of nausea and he wasn't feeling real well and he went to the cruise ship doctor. They looked after him a little bit and then he continued a bit on his cruise and then he arrived at one of the towns in the Philippines and again he wasn't feeling well and went back to the doctors and they said look okay we're gonna send you for some tests because they can't do a ton of tests on a cruise ship. They can do basic stuff on a cruise ship. They can look after you, you break your arm, you're having a heart attack. They can look after stuff like that. They're not a full full facility where they can run, you know, x-rays and, and uh, blood work and all this like a hospital can. So he was escorted off the ship, brought to a hospital, and apparently the tests there just kept taking longer and longer. The hospital didn't want to release them until they ran the full scan of tests and tests take time. Unfortunately, tests take time. It's not instantaneous. You don't walk in and get a blood work and the doctor has it in their hands five minutes later, right? So, especially in a foreign country, when they don't really know what's wrong with you yet. And of course, the cruise ship time ran past the cruise ship waited a little bit, a few hours I'm told, but he still didn't make it back to the cruise ship in time and there's other passengers as part of a world cruise and the heck, cruise ship had to leave. And now he's saying that of course, that the cruise line failed in their duty to look after him. I don't know if I say that's really the case because they looked after him. They brought him to a hospital. At that point, it becomes your responsibility and the insurance responsibility of what's going on. And a lot of this was also created a lot more complication 
because the gentleman has a enormous terrifying fear of flying and so they couldn't just fly him home. They had to send for a boat. And then they send, had to send medical team to an area to pick him up in a smaller plane, sedate him, and bring him back home. All that has to take planning and processing, and it doesn't happen like this. Nothing happens like this with insurance. If anyone out there has ever had your home wrecked, for you know bad weather like a flood or a tornado or hurricane how long did it take to get your home repaired well think of how long it can take to process medical and transportation and all that it can take a while folks and i i don't know if i would totally say that i agree with the cruise line let him down and failed to look after him because as far as the cruise line responsibility is it's to make sure he's safe and that was to get him to a hospital for care once he had a repeat of going back to the hospital uh, back to the doctors with the same kind of ailment the doctors at that point have to take a stay they, they can't take a chance oh well you're here take an aspirin and go back to your room and something happens to him now they're reliable so they did what they're supposed to do sent him to a hospital I, I do wish in a way that they had representatives at all the different locations where you're stopping and then that representative would take over and you know help communication from that point. But cruise ships stop at 50, 60 countries sometimes. They would have to have a single representative. It would be a big, big process. But it would be nice if that was the case. I will admit that. Now we also have Norwegian Cruise Line, which is canceling the breakaways transatlantic sailing in February 7th of 2025. The reasoning they're saying is because um, they're changing locations for a dry dock, so they will no longer be doing that transatlantic. So you don't have to do anything if you actually book that sailing because it was for sale. They are just gonna automatically cancel your cruise refund the money to your original form of payment or if you used a future cruise credit that will be credited back to your account and still could be used all the way through the end of 2025. Also they are giving every passenger who is being cancelled a 10% future cruise credit for any bookings made again up till the end of 2025. Now it's a little bit disappointing for people doing it to transatlantic, but hey, at least they're giving us plenty of notice, right? <laughs> Almost two years of notice that hey, this cruise isn't going, you have lots of time to make other plans, and by the way, here's an extra 10% of a credit. But uh, yeah, Dave, you notice that there's so many cruises now getting canceled in different for different reasons, it just seems to be almost in the news all the time from ships breaking down, extended dry docks, changes of dry docks, overbooked cruises, running out of food on cruises, etc. Right? We've just seen a lot and it, it's, it, here's just another example of 18 months down the road and a cruise is being cancelled. Well, there is a, a, a remedy coming very shortly, shall we say, because in 2023 and 20 to 2028, five year span, there are over 60 brand new ships coming into service that have been ordered and are currently being built or about to be built. 60. What does that do for the capacity of the cruise ship industry? Well, believe it or not, those 60 ships are going to raise the capacity of the cruise lines 43%, almost a 50% increase in cruise passengers. Uh, wow, Those mean, that means there's a lot of big ships being ordered, folks, a lot of large ships, because there's over 300 and some cruise ships out there now, and if you're only bringing 60 on board, well, that's one, you know, that's one fifth, one sixth but you're bringing up 43% more, which means a lot larger cruise ships coming down the pipe for the cruise industry. I'm hoping that as all these ships come online, a lot of our favorite, you know, older ships, not even that old, like the Celebrity Edge is not an old cruise ship, but she's about to be the 
fourth one of her type of ship with Celebrity Cruise Lines, and imagine to get a fifth or a sixth one in there. It would be really nice to see the prices of the slightly older cruise ships drop a lot while other people try and get on the brand new biggest and best cruise ship in the fleet. Uh, I'd like to see some prices drop, but uh, right now it's 2023 and prices aren't dropping for anything, folks. Prices are going through the roof. Well, I hope you appreciate this quick news update. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from all around the world? Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.